Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Rossi, the guy with the guy here for a quick video to warn you and tell you so you don't get arrested and have to pay 200 and billions of dollars of fines just for owning one of these. So as sarcastic as I made that intro seem, it's actually true. So today, when you're actually watching this video, December 21st, 2015, if you own a drone or a UAS or quadcopter, an unmanned aircraft system, you have to register these products that you have now. And that goes from now, from now on, December 21st, 2015, on until whenever this thing changes or doesn't change, or if you've previously bought one. So basically, if you own one, if you plan to own one, you're gonna have to register your drones with the FAA. And really this is only within the United States as of right now, it's not international. And that's basically a way for them just to keep track on you to see, you know, who's registering the drones, who's buying them, and kind of, you know, why you're buying them, even though that really doesn't go into it. But you have to register these drones. I'm gonna give you some facts and information, some of the penalties if you don't, if you get caught, um, you know, without that and some of my final thoughts as we go along with this, but you gotta do it. As I just said, today, December 21st, 2015, you need to register your drone and you have until February of 2016 where there will be no penalties, so they give you that grace period. But if you do it before January 20th, you, uh, you're you charged a $5 credit card uh, fee, you actually get that $5 refunded. So they really just want people to register their stuff. It's just an incentive for them to do that. And these uh, certificates and these numbers and unique numbers that you get, uh, that you will have to display on your drone will be good for three years. And they say you have to renew every three years. So as I said, you get a unique ID number, which will be uh, you know, finished when you finished uh, all your stuff and you get an email sent and your certificate uh, of you know whatever will also be emailed uh, to you. You don't have to print it out. You don't have to have it with you. But if you're ever in a situation where you're flying outside, and let me mention that now, if you only plan on keeping a drone indoors, which is really kind of pointless, you don't have to have a unique number, you don't have to register, but if you plan to go outside anytime, you have to have that number in case you know you get called out for it. You need proof that you're registered unless you face uh, some of these fines. But you get a unique ID number, you have to put that uh, onto your drone so that way it's visible or your quadcopter, uh, so that way a, an authority figure can see it. But you do have to have proof that you uh, have done this and just keep it in your email. Have it electronically, they say, is fine right on the uh, FAA website. And these drones could be even homemade or even buying, you know, in a store. Uh, everything of the sort, it really expands that span. It really expands uh, of that plane. So you can, even if, and it goes by weight. So if you have 0.55 pounds, so a couple ounces all the way up to 55 pounds, you have to register your drone. It doesn't matter. Even if you think it's a toy, even if you think it's, you know, a tethered or something like that, you still have to do it because the FAA wants to see it. So that means even if something as this little cheer syndrome, be it, you know, it's weight and everything like that does fall over that 0.55 pounds and up to the TGI Phantom standard, um, you know, these are two extremes, but this exactly shows what they want. They want you to register this stuff. Now this cheersome one, I will never ever have to take outside. I'll leave a link below for it. Uh, so I'm not going to register it and I really don't care that much about it. It's a cheap kind of, you know, toy. Um, I'm never taking this outside anyway, so I don't have to worry about it. Plus the unique ID number would have nowhere to fit on this. But you know, if I want to do something like this, I have to have this there. But the two, you, the, but the two extremes is if I plan to, you know, go this outside, and plus, if a cop ever stopped me for this, yeah, you, that's pretty ignorant. But, you know, bam, this is the two things that you would have to register. And that being said, you only have to have one unique ID number uh, for all the, all the uh, kind of drones, quadcopters, whatever you want to call it, as you have them. So you don't need to register each individual one. You can use that one number to display on those because it's really just showing who it's from and who is using uh, you know that type of equipment. And it really all depends on, you know, it doesn't matter if it's for fun or if it's commercial use, it's for the entire market. The penalties really do get quite harsh and it is kind of bullshit, but they do get harsh and they do want people uh, you know, registering these drones. So the F they, they have a couple things. So the FAA civil penalty they're saying could be $27,500, but then that can range to other fines and procedures from $250,000 all the way up to even three years in jail in prison if you are found not, your drone is not registered if you're stopped by an authority figure. Wow. And once again, it's really not a big deal. It's just a government way of, you know, just getting into our personal lives for no reason and stuff like that. But I kind of get it. They want to track and see who, who buys it. Even though I clearly have a receipt and it's in, you know, my, uh, my payment histories that I bought the damn thing anyway. But my thing is, who is going to police it? Are these police officers really going to come around in my local town if I'm out of park and be like, hey, do you have your registered UAS 
FAA TR-14 registered drone number? Uh, no. But it's essentially free, so just do it anyway. And that's our advice, and this is my reminder to you. That's the key information. And even I looked at some funny things as well. It's like, oh, do you even have to register a balloon? And interestingly enough, you don't. No, balloon, no balloons, no frisbees, uh, paper airplanes, you don't have to register. And I guess they had to explain that out. They say you can't fly more than four, uh, 400 feet, which has pretty much been the uh, benchmark anyway, since all of this stuff has been, you know, for the past year, year and a half, and all this stuff has been, you know, coming to fruition, which is essentially like a 30 or 40 story building. And if you lose pretty much visibility of it, and that's pretty much over 400 feet, because that's pretty damn high. So that'll run out the video there. Register your drones. I'll have the link to the FAA website down below if you're within the US. Uh, just register it. I know I have a couple videos recently, especially when I bought the, uh, the DJI uh, Phantom that, uh, you know, has encouraged other people to buy some things to so really look into it. But now you have to register your drone. Do it before January 20th and you'll keep your $5 back. And they're saying they're charging that so that way they can maintenance the site or it goes towards the cost of the site or whatever. But just do it. It's it's worth it in the end. Eric Ross, the guy with the eye. Register or else.